Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. Today we're going to do a brief video on balancing equations. So let's do that real quick. All right, so let's take a reaction that is unbalanced. Let's take this reaction. And just look at it for a minute. Okay. What does balancing a reaction mean? What balancing a reaction means is that you need the same number of atoms of each element on either side of the arrow. That's what it means. Okay? It doesn't mean that you have the same number of reactants and products. It doesn't mean you have the same number of molecules. It doesn't mean you have the same number of substances. Because obviously, in terms of substances you, or, or molecules, you have two different substances on this side of the arrow and one different substance over there. So that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at the number of atoms of each element. So what we tend to add is if we get a reaction like this that already has the subscripts already written out to show the formulas as they exist, what we are going to add is we are going to add stoichiometric coefficients to this reaction. And what the stoichiometric coefficients do is they tell me how many of each reactant I'm needing in this particular reaction, okay? Or how many of each product I need in this particular reaction, okay? What you're gonna do is to not find the number of each element, you're just gonna simply take that coefficient and multiply it times the subscript. So the coefficient, the big number in front, times the subscript to the immediate right of that particular elemental symbol will tell you the number of atoms of that element on one side of this equation. Okay? If we move from left to right here, it becomes a little bit of an interesting moment. The reason why is because one of the things you would see is that we can start with S. The reason why we can start with S when we're balancing is because S exists in only one place on either side of the arrow. You would never, ever, ever start with O if you could, because O is in two places on one side. OK, let's start with S. So S, if I look at the big number in front and the subscript, both of those are not written down, which means they are 1. So I have 1 times 1 S's, which is 1. I have 1 times 1 S's on this side, which is 1. You don't do anything at that point. And lo and behold, we have the O's. It is hard at this point to try to balance two O's on one side. So my suggestion to you, there are tricks to doing this. My suggestion to you is just to increase this by 1. Increase the first coefficient of the first reactant by 1 and then try to rebalance and see what happens, okay? So now, let's look. I have two times one S's on this side, and one times one S's, which means I need a two right there. Let's see if we can, if we've balanced out the O's by just doing this, or if we can, to make this a little easier on ourselves. So we have two times two O's here, which is four oxygens. And I have one times two O's, right there, which is two oxygens. That makes a grand total of six oxygens on the reactant side that I need to balance with. Okay, let's look at this. Two times three oxygens is six oxygens. So indeed, just by increasing this by one and then rebalancing, we were able to balance this reaction without too much heartache. Okay, let's talk about another one. Uh, let's do this. that's an AQ. Okay, so let's take this reaction. Again, there's a trick to this. Let's look at these coefficients for a moment here, which all are 1 when I first write this out, or first look at it. 
This reaction is actually a precipitation reaction. We'll talk about precipitation reactions a lot more in our future. But we know it's a precipitation reaction because I form a solid in solution. And that solid in solution is actually called a precipitate. And it's the reason why it's called a precipitation reaction. In this particular case, let's start off with the Li's. But before maybe I start off with the Li's, maybe I should recognize something first. And that's something that I might recognize is the fact that I have the same polyatomic ion on both sides of this equation. My CO3 is exactly the same as CO3. Hmm. If I put that in parentheses, then I might be able to balance this uh, reaction, or balance not just the C's and the O's, and the O's, notice, are in four different places, so they're going to be hard at the end. But maybe I could balance the CO3s, because they're all the same thing on both sides. Likewise, I have NO3s on this side. Guess what? I have NO3s right there, too. That's the same polyatomic ion on both sides. So one of the tricks is, obviously, from the first one, not to start with the, there were two things here that were the tricks. The first thing was not to start with an element that exists in more than one place on one side and hope that by doing some other things, it would work out. The second thing was to, if it, you do have to deal with that, which we did in this reaction, increase the beginning number by one and see if you can rebalance it. Here, the trick is if you can balance, if you have the same polyatomic ion, ion on both sides, then balance according to the polyatomic ion. So let's do Li's real quick. Li's, let's go back over here. I have one times two Li's on this side. I have one times one Li's on this side. I would think I need a two here. But let's look at CO, CO3s. All right, carbonates. I have one, and I'm going to multiply times the outside of the parentheses here. So I have one times one carbonates on this side, and I have one times three carbonates on this side. So I have three carbonates that I need to balance here. I'm going to add a three right there. That changed my number of Li's, didn't it? It changed it from two that I had to begin with to now, how many Li's do I have? I have three times two, which is six Li's. So I need to balance that over here. OK. Li's now are balanced. I have six on this side and six on this side. And carbonates are balanced. I have three times one, which is the same as one times three. Great. Let's do the next one. One times one Al's, one times two Al's. Two Al's versus one Al. I'm going to need a 2 right there, right? And now let's look at NO3s as a whole. I have 2 times the outside of the parentheses, which is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times outside of the parentheses, which is 1. 6 times 1 is 6. So 2 times 3, 6 times 1, that's balanced as well. And I made a problem that looked very complex much easier. Until next time, we'll talk more about balancing or about something else. I do.